Hello, I am Mike. I am Chris from the Devil Wears Prada. And you are watching Pitcam.tv. Hey guys, you guys are back in Europe. Uh, you've had a couple of shows so far. Uh, how's it been going? Uh, excellent. Uh, I think this is our fourth, fifth, fifth. Uh -huh. And they've all been uh, quite excellent, so we're stoked. Yeah. Um, 818 has been out for about eight months and you've toured a little bit with it. Uh, how's the feedback been like from the fans? Uh, it's been good. Um, I think that it's, it's been a little bit better received, I think, in the U.S. where we tour a little bit more. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we're satisfied with the record and what we're able to come up with. So, um, yeah. Any crowd favorites where you didn't really expect the songs to be crowd favorites, like live? Uh, no. They, they, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's Over here, it's a little bit different. Like, they... Not as many people are familiar with the new record, so it's more of a like proving ourselves over here as opposed to like performing the fan favorites. Like the fans like to hear the old stuff with yeah. every band, so yeah. it's kind of how it goes over here a little bit. But so none of the new songs have sort of stood out live for you. What about in the U.S.? Uh, in the U.S., actually, um, we might just be way too subjective and biased but whenever people like our slower songs we're really excited because yeah. I know that we we like making slower songs we like performing slower songs um, so songs like uh, 818 or Care More yeah. when those receive a, a positive reaction we get really hyped about that um, over here uh, I mean we have a pretty short set so unfortunately we're only playing two 818 songs um, but yeah it's just a fast set cram as many songs as we can in and, and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Well, this album uh, definitely has a slightly different sound from the, the one before. Um, I mean, you can definitely hear that it's you guys, but still you notice the differences. How did you approach the songwriting process this summer? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> normally I would say that 818 is compared to Dead Throne. It just has a bit more melody in it, uh, a lot less... Uh, we didn't stick to just dark sounding stuff, but a lot of it was uh, we get together in groups and I'll kind of have songs already started that I did on the computer. And then we just kind of vibe off of each other and we add to it, take away, do all that. And uh, that's what we've done for every record. But this one, you know, was just more of a we need to. I was trying to kind of like encompass some of the stuff from the older material that the fans liked, such as the melody and uh, bring the melodic to the whole melodic metal type mm -hmm. thing so I don't know we just try to write good songs and they come out how they come out so what was it like writing uh, without having a like a permanent keyboard synthesizer playing uh, player because I mean it's obvious that you're not intending to give up that part of the music uh, well we've been working with John who plays keyboards live with us for for quite some time even when when James was still in the band John had worked with us um, he, he's quite brilliant. He, he works really well off of our criticism and our, uh, um, our suggestions. Um, honestly, he was more a part of the writing process than James ever was. So it, I know that it, it probably seems totally different to, from, uh, like an outsider's perspective, but John was, he wrote with us the whole time and, uh, he even lended a lot of advice and, uh, um, when it came to like chord progressions and melodies and whatnot, and he spent a lot of time working with Jeremy and I on melodies and, and vocals, as well as bending around different choruses to, to complement the vocals and whatnot. So John, I think, had a, a pretty predominant role in writing, even more than we ever had before. What inspired the, the uh, industrial sound? Because it's a little bit of a dirty industrial sound in there, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. I mean, it was a direction that we preferred over the whole dancey, synthy kind of uh, sound. It just is a bit fits a bit more with the serious image and just overall uh, sound that we're going for. And it just kind of came out probably due to the influence of bands such as Nine Inch Nails and uh, a lot of the more serious sounding electronic bands out there. Why the title 818? Uh, it was uh, a, a bit of scripture I came across um, a couple years ago, and I was really moved by it, and I thought it was interesting. And uh, coming up on being our, our fifth full length, it, it becomes terribly monotonous as far as 
these long titles or these one word titles and whatnot. And I thought uh, doing numbers is, is kind of intriguing. So that was also a bit of the inspiration and the fact that the verse sums up everything that I want to do encompass lyrically. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought it worked out well. And I, I'm proud of what of what that title encapsulates within the record. Uh, how did you guys work to sort of up your game on this album as far as your personal skills go, like you as a singer and, and Chris here as a guitarist? I think we've been, like, Chris and I are the youngest in the band, and we started when we were 16, soon before we turned 17, and uh, so from there, like, anyone is going to get better when you play guitar or write five records in an EP and whatnot. Um, and I, I think we've really honed in on that. And I think collectively as a band, we, we, we pay as much attention as possible, or at least we try to, um, on playing guitar and writing songs and not, and try not to be distracted by everything else that is involved with being in a band these days. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think that always coagulates and comes together when, we, whenever we actually hit the studio and we start writing songs and, um, I know speaking personally, like we'll come together and someone like Chris will write a, or demo a song and I'm just like, what on earth? And then like Dan will do like new drums for it. And I'm like, what on earth? And <laughs> everyone just gets better. And uh, that's exciting and fun. And I don't, if it, if it weren't exciting or fun, it wouldn't, it would suck to play in this band and be over it. <laughs> yeah. It, like he said, we just kind of vibe off of each other and uh, become inspired by the things that other people in the band bring to the table and even just the excitement of being in a room together writing but I just try to find music and movies and you know from that to like even comic books and stuff that makes me feel something and then try to just like figure out what it was that made me feel that and put it into musical form so just try to be inspired by things other than other bands other than you know whatever's popular whatever sounds good to me and whatever makes me feel something so as far as the lyrics go you seem to have been in a pretty dark state of mind when writing them yeah um <laughs> yeah i think that uh i don't know in retrospect i think a lot of what i was doing when i was younger was a little bit entitled and really naive um, which isn't to say that what I was writing about wasn't sincere, but um, again, from the age of 17 to now 25, uh, it's it's a totally different world that I live in, and it's a totally different um, battle between struggles and just being a, a person. Um, and I, I've always wanted to be transparent, and that's all I've ever tried to do with my writing, and it's never been to really satisfy anyone but myself, which I know is selfish, but I think the... I don't know, creating things is a selfish endeavor. Um, so yeah, it's just honest and it, it's about what's happening. And um, I don't know, I'm excited to write again actually and, and maybe move in a different direction, but still as off of what I've established. But mm. I, I don't know, it's just a, it's a method of transparency and... Mm. So tell me about this short story of yours. Uh, I, I've always liked to write when I joined the band, I actually did, I wasn't a musician. I, well, still I'm not really, but I uh, I always liked to write, and I was always just writing like prose and poetry in high school and just reading a lot. And uh, when they asked me to join the band, I was like, oh, yeah, I actually already have a lot of lyrics that I've just, I just like to write. Um, and then becoming a little bit distracted with the band constantly kind of pulled me away from that, as it can be rather exhausting, writing lots and lots of songs. Um, so... Uh, now I'm trying to pay more attention to that and I wanted to, I know that was like the zombie EP and writing Survivor, which is a totally fiction based song. Um, I wanted to do that again and, and having that opportunity on 818 was home for grave. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically when I got to write it and, and create this character and his life, I, I knew that instantly I wanted to have a more detailed account and, and do something more with it rather than just however many words you can fit in a song. Yeah. Are you guys big readers? Uh, we, Some of us in different forms, definitely him more than I and Andy, our bass player, we call him books. Oh, so okay. yes, I guess you could say. We, yeah, we, we vastly fluctuate. Everyone reads like a lot of comics and whatnot. Oh. And uh, I don't, but I, I, Andy reads a lot of books as well. Jeremy's like kind of in between, I guess, in, in some aspect as far as 
all encompassing. Um, but we do, and I, I like to. Uh, any must reads? Must reads. I just finished. Uh, um, I think the standout for me so far this year was a book called uh, The Angel Asmeralda, which is a collection of short stories by a man named uh, Don DeLillo, which is an American writer. He wrote a book called White Noise that was really well appraised uh, or well praised. And um, I read that and it was really good, but his short stories were fantastic. So that's, uh, that's one of the standouts for 2014 so far. Um, so what's next for you guys now? Tour-wise, we do the Warp Tour, and uh, there's like a week in between this tour and that, so that'll be interesting, to say the least. But uh, we're not scheduled too far out behind that, so I expect to probably start creating new music soon, hopefully. Other than that, we're really... I don't think there's anything on the table. We're, uh, we've got things brewing. Um, a lot of vinyl stuff. I'm a vinyl junkie, oh, okay. and so and our, our label is really cool with... Uh, I'm complimenting that, so we're working on a bunch of that stuff and different things to mix it up, hopefully within the next year and just putting out interesting releases and things that mix it up a little bit as compared to just doing full length after full length. So that's cool and we'll be working on that. We are working on a release currently that I completely forgot about, but it is like a collaboration with a bunch of other people, but can't say much more than that because I don't really know much more than that at this point. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, something's coming out sooner or later. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, anything you want to say to your German fans? Or European fans? Or uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, come out, well, I don't know when this is coming out. But if you have a chance, come out to the percussion tour, because it's a lot of fun, and the bands are all really cool dudes. And uh, we're happy to be a part of it. And thank you for the interview. And listen to our new record, 818, because it's my favorite one of all of them. And I'm proud of it. And... See you at a show if you come. Thank you. Thank you.